everyone, my name is Conte Tedis from the Sasha Slain Warrior. Episode of Online Prosperity Show with Prosper. Join us and learn more about how to customize your LinkedIn profile, how you can actually get some analytics from your LinkedIn, and also the type of things you should and shouldn't do on LinkedIn. It'd be great to see you online with us. Join in and learn something new about LinkedIn. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we help small businesses thrive in today's digital age. And today, I must do the... <laughs> I'm bringing you the chief warrior himself. You can tell I'm really excited about the next guest. Con, how are you doing, my man? Uh, hello, Prosper. How are you, mate? Lovely to finally meet you after so many interactions on LinkedIn. It is an honor and a privilege to be talking to you here today. Fantastic. And the fact that LinkedIn so happens to be your wheelhouse, today is going to be an explosive um, episode. Now, Con Sotides with us today is a social media strategist who supports small to medium enterprises to establish an effective brand on LinkedIn and leverage it for increased sales and new connections. As we have connected today, I spoke to him for the last 30 minutes. And if I didn't hit record, Maybe this episode was not going to be there, but we would have had the best episode ever. But I digress. Now, he's got extensive experience in sales, and Corn is a leading expert in digital marketing and social selling training. We're going to be talking about that, um, you know, in the podcast today. And also, he's the director of learning and an award-winning speaker and commentator. And this basically then makes Corn a highly sought-after host and coach for many events. And today, Con is going to be sharing with us his insights and expertise on how small businesses can succeed on social media, avoid all the common mistakes, and stay ahead of the trends. Now, Con, I could go on and on, all right, and talk about every one of these things, but I'll let you, um, you know, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the the mystery and the legend behind Con. Mate, that's a great intro. What can I say? That just uh, that just blew me away, Prosper. So thank you very much. Look, uh, traditionally it doesn't show, but I'm an accountant traditionally by qualification. I got into the public service, did that for a number of years, moved into the HR space. That's where I got my learning and development qualifications. I was a director of learning development, one of the biggest public service agencies here in Australia. And from then I moved out of, of that and got um, into the corporate world. I got into the real world, to be honest. And I got into sales. And I just got this thirst for sales. Just, it was just awesome prospect. And, um, and as I got into sales, I started looking for opportunities. Opportunities as in how do I build a pipeline? How do I build connections? And I ended on LinkedIn. So the last sort of 10, 12 years, I've been really heavily into LinkedIn. When I got my um, a sort of qualifications, two qualifications, one from Agora Pulse, which is one of the biggest uh, social media agencies in the world. They had an online uh, social media managers course, very intense. I did that. And also Jamie Sparks, Jamie, Jamie Shanks, sorry, my apologies, Jamie Shanks from um, Sales for Life. I did the, his course, and that was a really good course. It talked about not only LinkedIn, but also how to um, address you, what they call the um, your addressable market on LinkedIn. So how to hone in on aspects on LinkedIn. So I've got that sort of backing behind me. I've got real-life experience behind me. I've got clients that I work with where I adopt all these principles that I actually, that I've actually learn myself and now apply to my clients. So I really, I'm a kind of guy who practices what I preach. And you'll see me on LinkedIn. I virtually don't do anything that I don't suggest to my clients to do. So I'm very much of, of what you see is what you get. So I moved into the to this realm and I thought, well, okay, I like the term social selling. Now, social selling is a term that LinkedIn uh, developed. Uh, a bit of history there. LinkedIn developed the term as part of trying to sell Sales Navigator a number of years ago. And when they were trying to get sales navigator out to the general community as part of one of their premium products, because they had premium, but they needed something for that sales community. So they brought out sales navigator and I thought, well, okay, what are we going to do to promote this? They came up with a concept of what they call the social selling index, which is the four pillars. So I liked it so much. I thought, okay, social selling, I really, because I, what I do is a lot of that sort of thing. So I thought, okay. And I see myself as someone going there fighting for people. I see myself as someone going in there and advocating. I see someone myself as someone going in there and, and sort of supporting. So I thought, okay, and being of a Greek background, I thought, what else but a warrior? 
what else but a warrior so i'll be kind of social selling warrior uh, i've had some good reaction to it so it's been something i've stuck with in there for a number of years and i, I like it myself uh everyone yeah i see people at network events they go oh there's the warrior and i said oh, i just start laughing which means it's means the branding is hitting the mark so i ended up developing that as a brand ended up using that as a brand name and you then uh went to ai and created my logo which you see at the back here which is amazing ai we'll talk a bit about ai but ai is amazing created, created my logo because it's also about, about conversations as you can see it's about people talking to be people conversing which is what i try to do on linkedin so i hope that gives you a bit of a summary there prosper fantastic i was just listening to your history and everything else and that could have been a resume and you know that definitely really brings out the reason why you are an expert in what you're talking about from accounting to the actual sales in real life and now you're utilizing technology in the you know in the in the form of LinkedIn as part of your um product offering there now I did mention the word resume okay when LinkedIn started it was just a place where you would go in and tell everybody else what school you went to, what, yeah. you know, what uh, qualifications you have and everything else. And now you introduce something called social selling. What, where, what, what, what sort of is the difference to the old type of um, appearing on LinkedIn to what you have just presented to me right now? You're one of the few people that I know that's actually got that understanding because a lot of people who have come to LinkedIn more recently don't know how to do history behind LinkedIn. They've been on it except for uh, quite a few years, and I was always a case of link. You'd go into LinkedIn to find a job. People would say, "Oh, I'm looking for a new job. Go on LinkedIn." That in the last ten years, it's probably just changed dramatically. LinkedIn started thinking, saying to themselves, "We've got all these people. They're giving us you voluntarily their names, their titles, their business names, who they work for. Why don't we start thinking about how we can connect these people together to do some referral marketing, to so do some referral business together?" That's when they came up with, uh, they had a premium product, but they came up with a sales navigator product. And, so, and that's when they came up with social selling. Now, social selling has got four pillars. The first pillar, and this is the fundamentals of LinkedIn. If you get these ones right, and this is what I coach in, and this is what I train in. The first pillar is to make sure you have what they call a rock star, or what I call a kick-ass, sorry about the language, a kick-ass profile. That's the first pillar. Once you've got your first pillar, then it's about finding the right people to connect with. And that's the only, you know, people use that term, the ICP, the ideal client profile. So one is developing a, a rock star profile. The next is connecting with the people that you want to connect with. Whether it be, and it depends on your strategy, Prosper. So someone might be a very high level executive. They don't want business, but they want a, a branding. They want a thought leadership concept. They still want connections. Someone who's a BDM, a business development manager, he or she may want connections for business purposes. Okay, that's a different strategy. Be a CEO, a HR manager, or might be a, an alerted development leader, or might be just a, uh, someone working for a company, but they're looking to leverage that for future opportunities. That's a different strategy again. And who they connect with is a different approach. So the first one we said was LinkedIn profile. The second one is about connecting the right people. The third one is about what we call thought leadership, which is about educating your clients, educating your connections. It's the term that we use is thought leadership. It is positioning you that, for me, that is the key the platform or the key pillar of all the four pillars. It's the branding that you bring to yourself, position yourself as the expert in your field by either the connections you may have, or more importantly, with the content you are creating and sharing. And the last part of the pillar is nurturing relationships. So we talk about having a good profile because at the end of the day, everyone always will come back to your profile. Whatever you comment on, when I see a comment on LinkedIn and I like that comment, what's the first thing I'll do? I'll click on the person's pick and go to their profile. So once we see your profile, the next thing I do is, what's Prosper been talking about? Let's look at his activity. Oh, that's his, there's his content. Okay. Oh, look, he talks about digital marketing. He talks about, you know, sales strategies. He talks about his podcast. He talks about new opportunities. He talks about how he helps people develop a new new business uh, leads and new funnels and all that. I thought, wow, okay. I get an idea of what the person's talking about. Then 
I see who Prosper's connected with. So I'm seeing that second part. Who's he connected with? Who's he hanging around with? We have an old, um, I suppose it's a saying that goes around, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. I know if it's in your culture, but I don't see my culture. So I look and see who is he connected with? Who is he talking to? Who is he associated with? If I see some common connections, then I say, and I see some people that I have a lot of respect for, and I say, oh, they're connected to Prosper. Bang. I'm in with Prosper. I'll send him a connection request. Hey, Prosper, I see you connected to my good friend, George. I have a lot of time for George. He's a great advocate of this, this, and this. I'd love to connect with you too. And then the last part is we've got to nurture that relationship. Like you and I have done over the last couple of weeks and months. Hey, Prosper, yeah, I love what you're doing. Comment on their posts. Send them a message. Hey, mate, I just came across this article. I wonder if you'd like to see it. I haven't read it too. I thought it was really good. Yeah, Con, give us the link. Go for it. That's nurturing. So I'll just summarize quickly those four pillars. Your profile, your ideal clients, educating your connections, your thought leadership, and the last one is about nurturing relationships. They're what they call the four pillars of social selling. If you go to linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI, you have your social selling index. Now, you don't have to be a, a subscriber to that sales navigator product. Everyone has got a social selling index. As long as you've got a LinkedIn account, everyone gets access to an index. So that's linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI. As long as you're logged into LinkedIn, have you got it? Have you had checked it out? I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Yeah. Am I going to like what I'm going to see, Con? Well, this is where, this is the only type of uh, test we have, or or statistic you might call it, or analytics, that we can get an idea of how we're going on LinkedIn. Now, I'll give you, before you give me your score, I'm happy to share scores. If you got over 50, you're doing well. If you've got over 70, you're in the high echelons of LinkedIn. And what okay. that means is so what am I doing? LinkedIn, LinkedIn.com forward slash? Sales. S-A-L-E-S. Uh -huh. Forward slash SSI. Oh, uh, but I need to be logged into LinkedIn for that. Yes, you need to be logged in. Yes, yeah. So you need to be logged in, Prosper. That's right. My yeah, apologies yeah. about that. You're in? You All right. Hold on. I don't know if, if what I'm seeing here is, is amazing or not amazing. Okay. Okay. All right. The top left-hand corner, 11%. You're in the top 11% of your industry now. It depends what industry you have identified yourself in. See, if, I, if you scroll down, yours says in the marketing services industry. All right? Yep. So you're part of that marketing services industry. You're in that top 11%. I've positioned myself in the professional services industry. Maybe right, wrong. It just depends how you want to position yourself. Okay. okay. But, but that's all right. That, that's all, don't worry about that. Oh, go back. Understandable. And I Oops. really I really like that. Go, go back to sales. Yeah, go sales. Or go to LinkedIn.com. All right. Just give me a second. Uh -huh. LinkedIn.com. Sales. Mm -hmm. Where's this figure really? Yep, sales and this. Yep, sales. S A L E S. And then forward slash SSI. That's it. Now, leave it there. I'll talk you through this. This is important to be able to read this effectively. You're logged into LinkedIn. Yeah. There we go. No, no, go again. Just try hit again. Refresh. It's coming, I think. It's coming. Yep. All right. I'll talk you through this and we can do a bit of a. We want me to do my one up to share my. Okay, there you are. Okay, good. All right. So the, the top two are relevant, but don't stress too much about it. The most important part is the next part, which is 55 out of 100. Remember, I told you those four pillars that are there. Establish your professional brand, your profile, find the right people, your ICP, engage with insights, thought leadership, and build relationships, nurturing. All right. Now, LinkedIn rates you out of 20 for each one. Now, if you put your mouse, just put your mouse over those question marks, it tells you, don't click on it. It should come up with a bubble. There you are. Complete your profile with customer in mind. So it's saying to me, obviously, your 
that your profile is lacking some information. Okay. Okay? Find the right people. Just put your mouse over that and it gives you hints what you need to be doing. So you're not, you're not searching for enough people on LinkedIn. You got to do more searches for people. Okay. Okay. Engage with insights. Discover and share conversations. You need, you're either not creating as many conversations as in content, or you're not interacting with many conversations on LinkedIn. Okay. Look, I can, you could tell me this is wrong or wrong, but you probably know better. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Strengthen your network by finding and establishing trust with decision makers. Okay? Find key people and establish relationships with them and nurture those relationships. It monitors what message you're sending out, what messaging you're doing. It monitors. All right, now, if you want me, I'll share mine. Okay, I want to show you something real quick before we, yep, we, we jump on there and then maybe you will be you'll be able to say, because if we then go on here. Yep. And um, my apologies for those that are being seen on my LinkedIn right now. Um, I think if we go on there, uh, not that and not that. Uh, where do you see? Yes. Okay. There. Yeah. Is that a good index for a site that's just been created not more than three months ago? Ah, why is that? Because this is a new profile. Ah, that's why. Okay. Having said that, now I know why your score is low. All right. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify that, that maybe I need to... Right. Correct. Yeah. As you can see, this was... This is when I joined February 2023. So makes this makes a lot of sense, Prosper. Makes a lot of sense. Now I know why your scores are a bit low because that's going to take time for you to improve. Because it's because LinkedIn is saying you're still fresh, you need some time to improve. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. Feel free to share your, your, your. Are you happy if I share mine? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I just wanted us to, and this is valuable content, by the way. Thank you so much. Wow. You okay. That? Okay. So again, I'll position myself in professional services, all right? Maybe it should be marketing. I just decided to put myself in there. So I'm top one of one in my in my team. That's I got my my team being me. But yeah. in my industry, I'm in the top one percent of my industry. Wow. Okay. I'm, but I'm only top three of my network. Network is people like you that are connected to me. My first degree network. I have a lot of high level LinkedIn people in my network. I'm going to be number three, three percent. I know that because I'm not as active as they are. They're very much active. They've got teams behind their profile. Yes, yes. And I'm not making excuses here. I probably should be higher than that. And hopefully I will be. I'm on 77 out of 100. Remember two before about building relationships? I'm at the highest level, 25. Fantastic. Uh, and look at us today. We're... <laughs> and that means I am connecting with the right so I'm building relations. I'm continually messaging, continually connecting people. Where I'm struggling is I'm not start, I'm not creating as much fresh content because I'm so busy creating content for my clients. I haven't had a chance to create content for myself. Right. So that's, that's where I need to pick up my act a bit. Create some more content for myself. Some carousels, some fresh content. Even if I'm not creating content. The other thing people can do if they don't create content is they can curate content. There's two ways to get yourself thought leadership. You can create content, which means you, you develop your own content. Top five challenges people face on LinkedIn, and you create content. Or you can curate content. Here's Prosper's top five challenges uh, on how to get on LinkedIn. And this is my view on those top five that Prosper shared. So I share your post, but offer my viewpoint. I'm curating content for my connections just like a museum curator curates that they want the museum attendees to see i curate content i go and find the right content that my connections my followers my my tribe will enjoy i recognize and appreciate the person who's created that content in this case prosper but i provide my thoughts 
it's always good to share your thoughts and perspectives on the content you're sharing because people want to hear me they're following me with all they want to see me they will hopefully follow prosper but they want to see what i think about prosper's content absolutely that's curating content because anything else people can google anything else people can um you know find elsewhere they want to hear your side of Correct. the story based on yeah. what it so is that's that. yeah. so, that's, so that's the way you read your ssi so everyone's got one of these there's linkedin ssi everyone's got one of these so it tells you them people in your team i know it's put me in a team i've got no team but probably because i've got navigator it's put me in a team that's that irrelevant this is the one i worry about people in the industry i don't worry about it says people that are in professional services have an average of 39 i'm at 77 Pond, you're doing very well. People in your network have got an average of 49. You're at 47. So these are the people in my network. So I'm down 1% last week. Mm, 1% is not going to be that bad. I'm happy with 77. My highest is ever, like, that I've ever been is 85. That's okay. where I used to create all the content. And see here, I'm very close. I'm very close to my, I don't know what's missing my profile. I have to find out what's missing my profile because I would take my profile very very seriously so that's very interesting i have an uh i have to go have a do double check on my profile because i'm very surprised my profile is not at 25. very surprised. understandable and 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 this this is gold what you just shared with us because a lot of people would just be posting and not quite knowing um how to measure you know the essence of what they're doing and usually if you can't measure something it just yeah. give doesn't give you you know the the feedback that you are really going for so i appreciate i want to show you i want to show you that sorry to interrupt once you we said people don't know that's one way of getting some analytics now if you're in creator mode now i remember number if you're in creator mode on linkedin which i am you also get access to this beautiful dashboard of analytics which you don't get in the free but on the um what the normal version and creative mode is free all right creative mode is free all you gotta do is just say activate creative mode and you get it for free but what it gives you gives you a couple of features you can get a newsletter for free you get access to linkedin lives mind you you need to have third-party software but you can go live on linkedin and the other thing is you, you get a really good analytics dashboard now linkedin is very sensitive on what analytics it gives you there are some third-party tools that do this a lot better, but for most of us, free analytics of how we're performing, this is perfect. Absolutely, because what doesn't get measured is you're not going to grow with that. Correct. And I, I really, and obviously, I mean, obviously, your um, bias would be being an accounting, you know, person yes, with an accounting exactly. background. Numbers are what actually <laughs> makes it's everything. Also, prosper the clients I work with. They want to know how they're going, how they're performing, what's happening. Absolutely. And numbers, yeah, numbers never lie, do they? I mean, <laughs> this is what picks up. Numbers never lie. Now you can consume it any way you want, but numbers never lie, and this is what it tells me. So for me, I've seen my post impressions the last seven days. Okay, I need to probably look at changing up the content, changing up the thing, and that's where Chat GPT comes in and helps me. Fantastic. That's another, that's another conversation. <laughs> Before we jump onto that one, because I know we're probably gonna, you know, <laughs> really stick around on that. There's one thing that you mentioned while we started talking, and I also appreciate the last segment. I'm gonna make sure that um, you know, we we really utilize the nuggets that you left um with us there. Now, there's something that you mentioned when we first started talking there, corn, about how you utilize AI to create your brand and to create your logo and things of that nature. And you also told us the story of how you became the warrior in and of itself. And that showed me that there's some sort of importance when it comes to branding and especially the platform that we've been talking about. So just talk us through how important is branding on LinkedIn, especially for small to medium businesses and what sort of steps can um you know people take to establish an effective brand on the platform well the most important thing with with linkedin is and i say this in a nice way if you don't have an ego get one and come on linkedin all right uh if you're shy and reserved then you gotta honestly you gotta really put that aside and come be confident LinkedIn thrives on egos. I want to mean that. I mean it in a nice way. You don't have to be smart ass. Sorry about the language, but yeah, smart aleck. 
or being a bit of a show off, but you need to convey confidence in who you are and what you do. Branding on LinkedIn, and that's where people say to me, Con, should I create a company page or should I create a LinkedIn profile? Well, you can't create a company page without a profile. Okay, so we should put my energies, your LinkedIn profile. Because Prosper, people buy from people. I buy from Prosper. I've come to Prosper. You know? People will see Social Selling Warrior, but they'll say, who's the guy behind this? They'll come to me. So always focus on your LinkedIn profile. Your company page is important, and it depends if you've got a big company, you've got about 20, 30, then you can have an employee advocacy program to support your company page. But if you're a small business, like a lot of people you and I probably deal with a lot, you know, two or three people, they haven't got a big marketing team, get yourself your profiles all speak and span. By that, have a banner. A banner that talks about what you do, who you are. In that banner, articulate your branding, your logo. Put a phone number. If you don't want your phone number, put a website. Make it easy for people to find you. You don't want them to be scrolling through and searching on Facebook or something. I wonder what his website is, you know? Bang. Make it easy for people to find you. So I, just, I like guiding people through this. Again, I'll show you my profile. Is that okay? Just... I'll guide you through this this way. See my banner. Go over, you see that, see, you see a bit of a LinkedIn there, you see Con, you see LinkedIn strategies, you see my logo. All right? So you, you know this guy, you know, when you see it for the first time, you go, gee, he must be, he must either work for LinkedIn or know something about LinkedIn. One way or another, you get a, an idea, this guy is a LinkedIn person. Picture of yourself, no background uh, images. No pictures of you at the last wedding with a bit of a rose in the chest. No pictures of you with other people hugging. Picture of you above the shoulders, smiling. Because when you see that picture of Con, when you meet me in real life and you see me now on the screen, that's exactly who I look like, don't I? Make Definitely. sure it's at least a year or two. Not when you were 27 years old at high school, or sorry, at uh, university. Make sure it's a current picture. But branding, this is what we talk about branding. And this is the first thing people will look at. They'll look at your face. They'll look at your brand. They go, okay. The next thing, the most important thing, and these, this is what people forget to do, uh, Prosper, a lot. I've highlighted those first three lines. They are the crux of your profile. Why? Because Google uses those three lines to index you on its search engine. All things being equal, if you copy and paste that into Google, my profile should be in the first three or four results. So Google uses those words to index you on its uh, search engine, on its platform, okay? Very important. That's where branding is so important. So we're talking about branding here. Your banner, your look, your profile headline is very, very important. Now, this is when you get into creator mode. We'll talk about that. The other thing you've got to start thinking about is having other things like featured sections where you can highlight, and everyone's got access to a featured section, where you can highlight two or three key things. So I was a part of a video for the future in AI. They asked me to contribute. I contributed. That's going to be number one because I'm showcasing my expertise in this sphere in a worldwide perspective because that video has got four or five other worldwide experts talking about AI. And then I've got here something I'm proud of, social media and content marketing. That's my business. That's what I do. I want to show people that I'm qualified or recognized or I've done some training and development in that space. Now, I could put more, but usually two is enough because you don't want people scrolling across too much. Activity, about section. The about section is where we get to talk about who we are. Never, never, in my view, again, this is Con's view, there's going to be others, never talk about it like you're writing a resume. It always comes from the first person. I am. I have. My status. I graduated. I, I, I. It's about you. Oh, Con is a thought leader in the, in the space. Con has been able to achieve. Con is, hey, man, it's my profile. Why should we call myself Con? Talk about yourself. I have done this. I have succeeded in this. I have been able to do this. This is some results I've got. And then your experience section. But the one area, 
that people fundamentally don't pay attention to, and this is the social proof of every profile, is recommendations. Recommendations are the most is the most underrated, yet the most powerful part of your LinkedIn profile. I don't know why LinkedIn has it than a bottom, to be honest. I've written to them and said you should put a higher up. It's the most powerful yet most underrated part of LinkedIn. Why, Prosper? Because these are people, these are real people that are talking about you. LinkedIn is all about me talking about me, my banner, my face, what I do, where I've appeared, my activity, my about section, my, 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 my. We come to here, it's, hey, someone's actually vouching for this guy. Someone's actually happy with what he's done. So they're real people. And this, again, what I do is practice. I will click on this person and say, ah, okay, find him. Does he exist? Yep, he exists. There he is. I'll send him a message. Hey, Shuri, you talk about working with Con. You're very happy. There it is there. I can talk there. Can you give me a bit of an insight? I'm looking at engaging Con. Can you give me some uh, understanding of how he helped you? And what do you do for you? How good is that? It's your walking, talking references. That's why I say to people, always focus on your personal profile. Get this first part here correct. With all due respect, skills and licenses and all that, they're good. Don't form a key component of your branding on LinkedIn. The key components, again, your banner, your picture, your profile, Headline, your about section. Yes, experience is good, especially for those looking for a job, Prosper. Experience is very good because right. people say, okay, where have you worked? Then, guys, 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 focus on your recommendations. So, I mean, I'm a bit out of date now. I need to get one. Every six months, you should have a new one. Okay. Hope that's helped uh, in telling you about branding on LinkedIn. Oh, fantastic. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, who do people say you are? And branding, according to um, Jeff Bezos, is um, he says that what do people say when you're not in the room? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And those recommendations are when you have left the room and somebody is actually, um, exactly. you know, saying something about you. And that's where the opportunities come in, because like you have said, somebody can actually go in, click through to that person, connect with that person and say, hey, is what you said, um, you know, true and forthcoming yeah. about this person or were you under duress? Just blink twice so that we know that right. that is that is actual exactly. fact. So <laughs> with with all that, there has to be a couple of success stories that maybe you would want to share with us. Just one where you would have worked with someone, um, maybe a small business that you worked with and, you know, that you just helped to essentially establish an effective brand on LinkedIn and how that actually translated to them, maybe either increasing sales, increasing their thought leadership, increasing their profile, or what sort of success have you gotten ever since you've jumped onto this platform? I have a, I've got a couple. I'm happy to use one, but I'm not clarifying this with the clients. I won't use any names if you don't mind. No names. Fair or... enough. Thank you. Yeah. No names. But okay, there was a particular individual uh, uh, she was a lady. She was all in partnership with some other ladies overseas. One was in the Netherlands and one was in um, in Poland. They were developing the Worldwide Leadership Institute. They were all experts in leadership. And they were looking to sell their courses online, but looking a way of marketing to other senior people. They came to me and said, okay, Con, what do we do? So... The first thing we do with them is create, of course, their powerful personal brands. So once they've done that, the next thing we did is we created a company page for them to showcase all of them because we have to have a company page to bring their profiles all in under that page. Therefore, there's alignment between a company. The company gives a company page will give you an alignment. You can use that for general you know, notices or, or content. But individuals have got to also be very active. So what we did then is we tried creating content, creating specific content on leadership, creating downloadables that people can get access to for quick, simple tips that will have a call to action to go to the 
the website to buy the actual courses that we're creating. So we created one, a profile, strong profiles, created a company page for them, helped them to create content, taught them how to create content, taught them how to connect with the relevant people. Because they were in leadership positions, they were looking to establish relationships with other senior HR, senior chief officers who had people in their teams who needed some leadership training, whether it be emergent, intermediate, or advanced. So creating messages for them on how to connect with these senior people, creating scripts of how they can use those scripts to connect with these people. Once they started doing that, they went gangbusters because they were able to connect with the people, create a relationship, able to give a quick downloadable, some snippets from their training course, which got those people excited. They started going to the website and clicking and buying courses. And the success there was came down to the number of sales they were getting and the number of hits and views they were getting on their profile. Does that help you? Oh, absolutely. This is a really good case study right there. <laughs> I, don't, well, I can't give you any names of details, but if people want to know that, I'm happy to. And you, if you go to my profile, you probably see a recommendation from them, but that's, believe it at that, it's probably one of those recommendations that are on my profile. Fantastic. Now, obviously, if somebody is sitting on here and really, really excited about what you've shared and all the social uh, selling uh, stuff that you've got going on and they've maybe looked up their social index, what would be the first, um, you know, place for them to actually go on to i know you showed us your profile but you might have other places that you want to direct people to so that they can find you yep you can go to my look most thing you can go to my profile that'd be a good one you can go into uh social selling warrior.com no way you at the end so social selling warrior.com that's my website there is a contact us uh component there that will tell you the services we offer so the services we offer at the moment uh prosper is one, we do LinkedIn profile reviews and rewrites. Two, we have six one-hour coaching sessions where we go through the whole process for you. That's the old um, Stephen Covey where, you know, teach them how to fish, they fish for life. I love that principle. So I teach people how to fish, that way they can fish for life. The third offer is we do it for you. So we take control and ownership of your social media profile and we will create the profile, we'll update your profile, we'll find you the right people, We'll interact with your people, we'll create content for you, we'll nurture relations. So the whole four pillars, we do end to end of that. That's our third offering. They can go like I said, my website, Social Selling Warrior, uh, and uh, you can they can either go to info at social selling warrior.com. Info at social selling warrior.com is my email address. They can send an email to that email address and we can uh, look after them in uh, any way they want. Fantastic. And I appreciate you sharing all that information. Now, Con, you've been telling us a lot of the stuff we should do, but that also comes with a caveat of what not to do. You would know a couple of things that somebody might be doing right now that you can say, hey, you stop that. What could that be? The most important thing to do is when you're sending a connection request, always make sure it's tailored. So never send, if you have not met someone, I've not been directly introduced to someone and you don't know this person. And we get this every day. You probably get it. I've got about 10 sitting in my inbox now. Just send simple connection requests. If I've not met you and people that are watching this, please, if I've not met you or if you're not been introduced to me directly by some sort of manner or I've not interacted with you, if you send me a connection request, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're interested in. I don't know what you want. That's why you should always send a tailored message. What the, what you don't do is never send a connect. Just go connect, 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 connect. Don't. Always send a tailored message request, an invitation request. Now, I know it's laborious. I know it's tedious. But it's the only way you're going to get traction on LinkedIn. A lot of salespeople get trained. A lot of people use automation. And that's the other thing you should never do. Never, ever use automation. LinkedIn tracks it. And LinkedIn will ban you, they will cancel you, they will close your account for a number of days. If you keep on doing it, they'll even close your whole account. LinkedIn is very ruthless on its terms of use. They don't like scraping. They don't like people using scraping software. That's why I do not touch any, any automation. Everything I do for my clients, it's late nights for me, but I do manually. 
And that's what you should be doing too. It's LinkedIn is there to create relationships, not there's an automation tool. So send a tailored connection request. E.g., hope Prosper, I love that uh, podcast you did with Con recently. I'm really enjoying your podcast. I love to connect. Bang. Why? Something in common. Prosper gets to see what you've liked about him. Prosper gets an idea of what you are enjoying. Prosper will connect straight away, trust me. Just to send a simple connection request to Prosper, Prosper will say, he's going to look at your profile. He might say, oh, this guy might be trying to sell me something. You know, he might be looking to do something. Oh, you know, well, well, I'm not really happy. Sometimes there's fake profiles. So I personally, if I see the big fake profile, not many connections and all that, I don't, I ignore them. First thing you should do, as you shouldn't send just a connection request, you should send a tailored message. When you do send a tailored message and the person connects with you, please do not follow up with a spammy sales message. Hi, Prosper. Great to connect with you. Here's my brochure. Here's my phone number. Here's our prices. Love to talk to you further about it. Or, hi, Prosper. How would you like to get 10 times the leads in the next 10 days? Fully booked, confirmed. Yeah, yeah, I can see you shaking your head. No, do not do that. When someone connects with you and they accept your request, Hi, Prosper. Thanks very much for accepting my connection request. It means a lot to me because I love your content. Look forward to seeing more of your content as we progress our relationship. Beautiful. And Man. that's about nurturing relationships. Then, the week after, two weeks after, Hi, Prosper. We've been connected for a couple of weeks. Just wanted to share with you an article that I found on that I think you might be interested in. Do I have your permission? Yes, Con. Yeah, I'd love to see the article. Permission asking is very relevant on LinkedIn. Yes, I'd love to see the article. Send me the link, Con. You get the link. Okay, he sends the link. Then a week later, hey, Prosper, did you get to read that article? Just love to hear your views. You are nurturing a relationship. You're not badgering, Prosper. Every week, every two weeks. Hey, mate, you kept a spreadsheet. Last time I contacted Prosper. Next time I contacted Prosper. Hey, mate, just want to know, it's been two weeks. Did you, get a read, did you get a chance to read the article? If not, don't worry about it. If you do, let me know. I'd love to hear your views. That's the kind of stuff we do. So I'm explaining stuff you do, which hopefully will tell you what not to do. All right? The other thing is on LinkedIn, like I said, with your picture, don't have pictures of you and your you know, tuxedo you had when you got married. Make sure the banner is clear. These are very important things of what you must do. Don't. And don't do other things where you're with your bunch of mates together. You can see other people there. Don't do things like that because it doesn't convey a very much a professional look. And the last thing you can do is when you are commenting on someone's LinkedIn, don't try to hijack the conversation. Yeah, you're there at their privilege. They've created the contents. People are responding to that. If you've got an opinion, yes, give it. If you don't agree with what they've said, be respectful. I have one principle. Always disagree with respect. You can always disagree, but very respectful. Hi, Prosper. My view or my experience has not been similar to yours. This is my experience. Maybe something different in my situation, or maybe I experienced something different. I understand that your situation is different. I'd love to, have, I'd love to chat more about your situation or your experience, because mine has been different. That's what I say to people. Sometimes when I don't disagree with something, with LinkedIn, I say, look, my experience has been different. My testing shows something. I'd love to hear more about your testing so I can better understand it. And don't hijack it and don't take over it and don't put your links to your website and don't put links to this and that. You're there to privilege that person. You did because people will see that interaction and they will go to your profile and they're going to say, what a, this guy is. <laughs> so they won't know what to touch. Hope that helps, Prosper. Fantastic. Like, for real, this is the kind of stuff that people are paying you top dollar for, I can imagine. Now, we could go on and on, but I still need to fit in this one last question somehow. I'm hoping we're not yeah. running out of tape here, Con. And if you're watching this right now, please send Con a message and high five him on LinkedIn, but make sure it's tailored because he's not going to respond a message that is not tailored to him. Not you know what they say, Prosper? They say, I saw you on Prosper's podcast. That's enough for me. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Now, you see, when we first jumped on here, I was a little bit starstruck because, Corn, you've been on TV three times. I've seen you talking in and around, um, you know, the social circles about chat GPT. And you've just got this air about yourself that everybody wants to be a part of. What's next? You seem to have reached the pinnacle of what's possible. I just want to know what's next for the social selling warrior. Is there going to be chance? Are we going to be singing Kumbaya? What is up with the next generation of corn warriors um, that, that are going maybe, to be unleashed? From maybe, I should go on, maybe I should go on chat you and say, write me a song about the social selling warrior. And you know what? I should do that because it probably will come out with something good. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do is I want to continue helping people prosper. I want to continue helping people make connections. And what I'm doing a lot more now too is I'm doing, and I haven't put this out there as a business, but what I'm doing is doing a lot of connections. So, for example, I have a big networking property and I have a big network in the financial industry. So when I'm in a, an accountant, I'll ask a few questions. They're not connected with some of my property people. If I meet a property investor, I'll connect them with a, um, a property developer. So uh, what I'm trying to do a lot more now is create connections and bring people together for no money at all. Just I want people to get together and do business. For me, seeing people come together from different industries, connecting and do some business, whether it be you know, a property investor with a developer, a property buyer with a real estate agent, uh, a mortgage broker with um, uh, uh, an asset finance, whatever the case may be. I just love bringing people together and helping them connect and get some business. And like I said, I'm truthfully, and people who are watching this will know me, I don't ask for anything. If people want to give me something later on, that's up to them. But I don't ask for it. All I want, all I want them to do is connect, find a relationship, and, and if I don't hear from them again, I don't care. So I try to do more networking. My aim is, my big, big aim, my goal is to become... I was a speaker on the circuit when I was in learning development as a director. I want to reestablish myself again, but in this field, and I want to be a speaker on the circuit. What I mean by that is to be able to get on stage at events and articulate my story, but also how to create that brand, how to leverage that brand, and how to take that to the next level to create opportunities. That's a bigger picture for Social Signing Warrior. Fantastic. Well, Con. Thank you so much for the time that you've given us on the podcast today. Like you have shared so much value that I feel like if this would be transcribed can actually be a course in what to do and how to actually succeed on LinkedIn, especially. All right. So I really value the insights you've shared with us today. I think we've learned a lot about how small businesses can actually establish an effective brand on LinkedIn and actually leverage that brand for new connections and actually actually increase their sales and succeed in social media marketing. And thank you so much for giving us that link where people can check out their social selling index. I believe your experience, your expertise in sales and digital marketing have become invaluable. All right. You've sold a lot of people on what not to do on their LinkedIn. And I bet if people have watched this, they're going to become the best social selling people in the, um, you know, in the newsfeed there. OK. And I really appreciate your time and your thoughts. Now, to our audience, we really hope you found this episode helpful and informative. Stay tuned for more insights and tips on how to actually succeed in today's digital edge. Thank you for joining us on the Online Prosperity Show and help me thank Khan for his remarkable advice that he's given us today. Thank you, Prosper. I really appreciate this opportunity. And please connect with me. Send me a title request. If you need any more information, I'd love to help people out. I'd love to have a conversation. I'm always up for coffee if you're in Melbourne. Bye for now. <laughs>